Hi, it's Susan here and welcome to In The Craft Room. As you would know from the last episode, I didn't receive issue number 35. Well, I'm still waiting on issue number 35 and issue number 36. With issue number 35, I did complete my patch. But with issue 36, they do discuss how you assemble all of your squares and sew them all together. As I'm not going to be sewing mine together as I go along, I'm going to be adding sashing between my squares and patches and I'm going to sew it all together when all of my squares and patches are complete. I'm going to do this because I've used a variation of fabrics different to the ones that are in the quilt and I'd like there to be a bit of a balance when I line them all up in front of me. So today I'm going to talk about how I've overcome the issue of all of the patchwork squares, well mine in particular, being all different sizes. Some of the patches have turned out quite larger than the others where some are quite smaller. I'm not sure if that's to do with my stitching or if it's the way that the templates have been created. To remedy this and to make all of my patches exactly the same size, I've cut out a piece of the blue gingham and I've appliqued my patch onto this blue gingham which is exactly 22 centimetres square. I've then stitched a bit of trim in either the white or the blue around each of the patches. Take a look at what I've done so far. see down here I've used the white trim and the blue trim. When I'm going to lay my patches out I'm going to alternate the trims between the character squares. So as you can also see these two are my last patches which I've made. This one is really tiny and this one is a bit bigger but not as big as the biggest one. I've got my 22 centimetre square blue gingham and I'm going to be appliquing the last patch that I did onto my blue gingham. I'm going to be doing this by ironing on a larger piece of fusible backing or bonder web onto my patch and ironing it onto my backing fabric. I've bought myself a few metres of the fusible backing or the bonder web and I'm able to cut out large squares and iron them onto my patches. This also comes in handy should your bonder web not work in the appliques or you've run out, which I tend to do. My first step is to give my patch and my backing fabric a good press. I'm then going to be ironing on the fusible backing onto the back of my patch. I'm going to let the bonder web or the fusible backing cool down a little bit before I peel the backing off. I find that if you remove the backing too soon, some of the adhesive comes off with it. 
Now that my patch has cooled down, I'm going to be removing the backing and to press it onto my backing fabric. I have now fused or appliqued my patch onto my backing fabric. I'm going to be setting up my machine and stitching around the trim around the edges. So I've chosen this blue trim to trim around the edge of the patch. I'm going to be now changing over my cotton and bobbin to the blue and then getting stuck into the sewing. I'm all threaded up with the blue. I'm going to now start my stitching. That's one side down, three to go. Our sewing's complete. I'm going to pack away my machine and give our patch a final press. So I've completed the patch and as you can see, I've gained some extra seam allowance for when I sew my squares together. I hope this idea is one that can help you with your patches. I know that quite a few people who have been making this quilt have come across the issue of these patches being all different sizes. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this idea has been a helpful one for you if you've experienced patches that are all different sizes. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Please hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified on the release of future episodes. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.